Go ahead. Okay, my name is Kelly Quinley. I'm a medical student with the University of Pennsylvania. And this summer I worked together with Click Diagnostics um, to come up with a project that would try to find a way to, serve, to screen for cervical cancer um, in a way that would be able to serve rural women living in areas where there are no gynecologists. Um, so we were in Botswana. We took 100 uh, HIV positive patients and we were using a cell phone uh, camera to basically approximate colposcopy. So in Botswana, uh, there's one pathologist for the entire country. So in terms of screening for cervical cancer using pap smears, it's pretty infeasible. They have to take samples, send them to foreign countries, um, have them looked at there. Often samples get lost or it takes a long time to get them back and the process is very expensive. So how do you screen for cervical cancer in a place where you have a lack of pathologists? There is uh, a technique that's called VIA, visual, uh, visualization and inspection of the cervix of the cervix acid, where you take regular household vinegar, white vinegar, you place it on the cervix for three minutes, and precancerous cells on the cervix that have a higher nuclear to cytoplasm ratio or less cytoplasm, um, they have less water, they dehydrate quicker, and they turn white. So you can see in this picture here, this is a patient who does have an acetyl-white lesion here um, that's deemed a precancerous lesion and needs to be treated. Um, so uh, basically what we were trying to do was see if um, our camera photos, so we used a digital camera um, on the cell phone that would basically, it has a zoom, and it can blow up a picture of the cervix well enough to see, um, you know, after the, uh, the application of acetic acid if there have been precancerous changes. Um, and the reason why we used a cell phone camera is because in areas where there's no internet or there's no computer, um, with the technology that Click Diagnostics has put together, you can send, um, you can take a patient history on the cell phone. Um, you take those photos and uh, the whole document together is sent via cell phone satellite to a website where gynecologists or trained professionals in women's health can log on, make a diagnosis, and send the diagnosis back to um, the nurse midwife or the community health worker that's working with these women in a rural area, um, and then these women can be treated. So we're still awaiting results. We're very positive. Um, but this was our attempt to try to get women um, screened for cervical cancer in rural areas. What were some of the largest challenges you faced in trying to uh, move the project forward? Moving the project forward, I think for us there, at least in Botswana, um, cervical cancer screening is something that's not very common. So we, a lot of these women for the first time were having, um, you know, if they hadn't had a child before, were having their first pelvic exam. Um, we had to explain to them, you know, what the changes were, that, that not all precancerous changes, you know, not all precancerous lesions turn into cervical cancer. Um, but this is a way, a step that they can take to take care of their own health, um, you know, keep themselves healthy, and a lot of them have children. This is a way to keep families together as well, so you can screen for cervical cancer and prevent cancer. How receptive were women to the, to the treatment? Not a single patient said no. We, um, we screened 100 patients. Um, they were interviewed by our four nurse midwives um, in Botswana that spoke Setswana, the, the national language, um, which I unfortunately don't speak, but everyone um, said yes, and then we treated um, the women that had lesions. We were able to treat either with cryotherapy or refer them to a leaf and cone biopsy clinic. Um, and what would you say are the going to be the challenges of scaling a project like this up? I think the biggest bottleneck that I could foresee is that patients, so if a, if a precancerous lesion is um, smaller than 75% of the surface of the cervix, it can be treated with, with cryotherapy. So just plain liquid nitrogen on the spot. It's an outpatient <coughs> procedure. Um, it's not very expensive. And those women can be treated um, in the clinic where they're seen and the photos are taken. If the lesion is larger than 75% um, of the cervix surface, or if the lesion extends into the os of the cervix, um, those patients need to be referred to a gynecology clinic so they can have either the leap procedure or the cone biopsy done. 
Um, and those procedures are a little more in-depth. Um, they incur a slightly higher risk of, of infection. So like for the cone biopsy, for example, those patients need to stay um, at least in Botswana in a hospital for three days. So I think the lack of those types of clinics in these areas where we'd ideally like to screen these women eventually um, would be the, would be the biggest challenge. How accurate are the testing methods? So we have a um, gynecologist flying back from Botswana now. Um, she works at the University of Pennsylvania, and she was there showing the, the um, nurse midwives who saw the patients in person that we um, photographed this summer and showing them, blinding them to the photos, showing them the same photos, and seeing if we get the same results back with accuracy. So once we crunch those numbers, we'll know. Great. Thank you very much. Thank you.